I know that you probably, you truly enjoyed Sister Kay. I did. I, she's a sweetheart, and she uh, she really wants to come back and become a little more involved in what's going on out here. I know it's a long ways from Oklahoma out here, but it didn't seem to bother her very much. So that's a good thing. No problem. And uh, we'll see more of her. I think we're going to do some more of the same kind of stuff we just did this last week in August. I hope everything turns out that way. We'll see how it goes. We'll give her a little time to go back there and get some other things established, and then we'll do it again. So open your Bibles to, um, uh, to Genesis 15. I want to read a verse out of here. Genesis 15. And uh, I don't want to read the whole chapter, but I would like to read a little bit. Uh, Genesis 15. And I think what I'll do is I'll start in verse 1 and just read a few verses out of there. And I'm going to jump down and read the last few verses out of that chapter. So if you will, so you can see this, I'm going to read. It says in this, Genesis chapter 15, verse 1. He says this, And after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram, Notice he hasn't had a name change yet. In a vision saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I, am, I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham, Abram said, Behold, to me thou dost give no seed. And lo, one born in mine house is heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to, unto him, saying, This shall not be thy heir. Talking about, talking about um, uh, Ishmael. He says, This will not be thy heir, but he that cometh forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth aboard, abroad and said, Look now toward the heaven, and tell, the, and tell the stars, and if there be uh, able to number them, he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and counted, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of the Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit. And uh, let me jump down a little bit. Well, then let me just read. And he said unto him, Take me an heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these, and divided them in, in the midst, and laid each piece, one against the other, but the birds he divided not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards they shall come out with great substance, and thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, and thou shalt be buried in a good old age. In the fourth generation thou shalt come thither again, for iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And it came to pass that when the sun was went down, and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp, that passed between these pe those pieces in the same day the Lord made covenant with Abram saying unto thee unto thy seed have I given this land from the river Euphrates unto the river the great river <clears throat> or uh, from the river of Egypt to unto the great river of the river of Euphrates and I don't need to read the rest of that but what I wanted to pick up on was some things there that I want to talk about just for a minute here today and uh you know, I want to just say a few things that are, I believe are important for all of us. I want to read you another scripture. This is out of Deuteronomy, and the uh, Sister Kay read this the other night. And man, I mean, it was like, wow, that is fantastic stuff. So if you want to run over to Deuteronomy, 
Um, it's right close. It's not very far. And I want to just read to you out of chapter um, 7 and just read another verse for you here. I want to read to you the verse, um, just a couple of verses there, um, 6, 7, and 8, maybe 9, maybe 7, 8, 9. Let me start with 7. It says this in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7. And I'll read from 7 to 9. It says, The Lord did set his love upon thee, upon you, nor choose you because you were more innumerable than any other, than people. He says, For you were fewest of all people. But the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he swore unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of burden from the hand of Pharaoh, king of the Pharaoh king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and will pray, uh, repay them that hate him face to face and destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. All right, let me just talk. Let me just start and talk to you just for a minute here. I won't keep you very long. But I wanted to talk about covenant today. Are you glad that God is faithful? He's the faithful God. I, that just ministered to me so much when she read that. I went straight to the, the Bible and found that. He's the faithful God that keepeth covenant for a thousand generations. Think about it. For a thousand generations. Let me tell you something. If you've never come to the conclusion that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, let me, let me tell you, He keepeth covenant for a thousand generations. He is absolutely faithful. He will not change His mind. He will not alter. He will not fail. He is absolutely the same. And that thrills me. You know, God, God came to Abram in this particular scripture in Genesis 15. And he said, listen, Abram, he said, I want you to do a certain thing. He said, I want you to lay out all of this, 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 uh, the three heifers and the three turtle doves and the three pen or whatever it was, three goats or the third year. He said, I want you to take them all and lay them out in an order and take care of them. And he said, I want you to make sure that it's done. And he says, that he's going to cut a covenant with Abraham. And he did. He cut the covenant with Abraham when the sun went down. I just read it to you. The Bible says a, a burning furnace and a smoky lamp went through, the, went through the, uh, the, the sacrifice and consumed them. And there was a, there was a covenant made with Abraham. He said, your, your seed will be as the stars of the heavens, innumerable. And that is fantastic to me. And, he's, and he starts by saying, I'm going to give you a land. Now, he's talking to the children of Israel. He says, I'm going to give you a land, and that land is going to be yours for inheritance. He says, but I want you to know something. For 400 years, they're going to be, you're going to be in, your, your seed will be in captivity. And I, I know that you know the story. It starts in Exodus chapter 1. And you can read the story of how they were in, ex, they were in uh, bondage to Egypt. And you know the story of how Moses, he sent Moses and Aaron down. And he said, I want you to go down and set my people free. They go down. And this is right at the end of the 430 years they were in captivity. The God, the God sends Moses and Aaron down there. And he says, I want you to tell Pharaoh this, that, and the other. And ultimately, you know the end of the story that Exodus chapter 12, the Bible says they were brought out with a strong and a mighty hand. And they spoiled the Egyptians. And they took everything they had. And they went out of Egypt free into the wilderness to worship God. And you know the whole story there. And they, they cross the Red Sea. And ultimately, they go into the land that God is going to give them as an inheritance. And he tells Abraham, he says, Abram in this case, but Abraham later, he says, your seed is not going to be of Ishmael, but it will be of Isaac. Your seed shall be called of Isaac. And he made that covenant with him. And I want you to know today, I want you to know today that you are of the seed of Abraham. You are the sons of Isaac or the daughter of Isaac with the same covenant God cut with Abraham. And he brought it all the way through to the New Testament is the same covenant that we have today. It's the covenant of promise that says, you know what? You are the the sons and the daughters of Abraham. How many of you know God keeps covenant for a thousand generations? He will not change. He never changes his mind. He is our God. Doesn't matter that you're Jew or not Jew. It doesn't, you know, the Bible says he broke down the middle wall of partition between them. He destroyed all of the stuff that separated us. 
And he said, now it's not a covenant that is, that is served with the circumcision. He said, it's a covenant that is served with faith. God is moved by faith. It's not a covenant that we offer, you know, and, you know circumcision has nothing to do. It will avail you nothing. Circumcision, uncircumcision, it avails you nothing in this day. That's what the Bible says in Galatians. Only that which is of faith which worketh by love. That's what he says right there. And the covenant we have today is based in faith. How many of you know that you must believe that God is and a God is a, a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. If you don't, if you don't base your covenant in faith, you don't have anything. Can you say this with me? I must believe. I must believe. You must believe. That's right. This covenant is based in faith. And I'm telling you right now, you can work your tail to the bone. You can just drive yourself to the grave working, trying to earn your salvation, and you will never attain. You must be born again. This thing is based in faith through grace. And I know that you know that, but I'm so thankful this morning that God gave us a covenant that he cut with Abraham thousands of years ago, and we still walk in that covenant because God is a faithful God. I love what the Bible says in Deuteronomy. He's a faithful God that keepeth covenant to a thousand generations. I don't know how long you think a generation may be, but let's just say it's 70 years. That's 70,000 years God will be faithful. But the facts are God is always faithful. He's always faithful. He never fails. I love what the Bible says in Timothy. The Bible says, even in our unfaithfulness, he remaineth faithful. He cannot deny himself. That tells me that he is not going to be faithful. That is his person. That is who he is. He is faithful. Did you know God is not going to be love or he don't just love. He is love. That's who he is. Man, that's good stuff. I love that. That is fantastic. How many of you know that a covenant is something that is kept? It's not something that is taken lightly. When you make a covenant, let me, add, let me, let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says that, that he, he, he compares the husband and wife to a covenant between God and the church. He says, you know, we become what? One flesh. Right? How many of you know that you're bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh? That's what you are. You're literally, you're literally became part of who he is. Are you with me? I said you became literally part of who he is, just like Kelly and I. We, we came together, we, we, we were twain, we were two, but we came together, we became what? One flesh. One flesh. And that's what happens when you get born again. You become one flesh with him. You become no longer two people. It's not, it's not a covenant like that where it's, it's become, you become, you become, you become. That's important. You need, you need to understand that. You, you, you become his dwelling place. You become him. You become one flesh. I like it. You know, you know, at one point Kelly had a different name. But now she had a name change because she became one with who? with me. We had a name change. We became one with the Lord. We became one with the Lord. We have a covenant and covenant is kept through obedience, through love. Am I right? You keep your covenant because you love. The Bible says if you love me, you'll do what? You'll keep my commandments. Therefore, because we love God, we keep his commandments. We stay in his, we stay in his covenant. You know, the covenant is good this way. Watch this now. Now, I know that a lot of people think of it this way, but this is, uh, I'm just going to give it to you. They think that this is the way the covenant works. What yours is mine and what's mine is mine. But that's not the way the covenant works. How many of you know what's yours is God's and what's God is yours? In other words, your life belongs to him, but also he belongs to you. And you know what? Listen to me. If, if, did you know the whole covenant is based on one word? It's called if. I love that word. I do. I love that word because it's, it's, it's the word of condition. In other words, the condition is this. If you do this, I'll do that. If you, you read Deuteronomy 29, 28, 29, he said that. He said, if you do this, I'll do that. Did you know he went as far as to say, if you keep my covenant and you keep my commandments, I won't even let you have the sickness or the disease that the Egyptians have. I won't let it come on you. I won't, you, you won't suffer the diseases of the world if you'll keep my commandment, if you'll keep my covenant, if you'll walk straight up with me, I'll never, you'll never see sickness. You'll never have disease. You'll never have that that's in the world. It'll never come on you. 
That's a pretty powerful statement. You can read it yourself. It's right in here. He said, I, if you keep my covenant, co covenant and you keep my commandments and you do what I ask you to do and you're obedient to it every time, he said, I'll never let those things come on you. You know, I know people, for example, old Smith Wigglesworth, did you know he died for no reason, apparent reason. He just went up on the platform one day to preach and God took his spirit and he died. You say, well, why? That's the way it is. Did you know Moses didn't die of some horrible disease? God took him. Did you know that Enoch didn't die of some terrible disease? God took him. I like that. You know why? Because you know what the Bible says concerning Enoch? The Bible says he was not because he pleased God and God took him. You know what pleases God? It, faith pleases God. God is pleased when we keep his covenant. You know, we have all of these things going on, all this stuff going on around us. And the whole time, if we could just, if we could just walk in the covenant with God and keep his commandments and love him and let him be the faithful God he is, and we could be the faithful people we should be to him, we wouldn't see such things we see. It's, it's, uh, it's, an, it's, a, let me tell you something. The Bible says this. Once you get born again, the Bible says this. He said, if you'll draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. Right? That's what the Bible says. You can read it in James. If you draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. If when you, when you step up into the covenant and you start walking in that covenant and you start keeping the commandments and you start doing the right things, God will move toward you. He'll move toward you. I've watched, I've watched my life lately. You know, I spend a, I've, I've been spending a whole lot more time in prayer, a whole lot more time in just the Bible. A whole, and I, man, I still have issues. Don't get me wrong. There's a whole lot of issues. I might have them. But I'll tell you what. I've learned this. I, I actually can tell from one day till today that I'm living and I'm seeing more compassion, even though sometimes I am very boisterous and I state my opinion, and sometimes people get on my nerves still. But I'm going to tell you right now, I can tell there's something beginning to change. You know why? Because when you draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. Did you know God is patient? He's kind. Did you know God is love? He always cares. I, uh, I found out that, you know, boy, what Sister Kay preached the other night was powerful. And, I, you know, before she ever preached it, I had a, I had a thought. I'm going to preach on the, the scripture. The Bible says, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. And I've often wondered, why aren't we filled? Well, because there's a lack of hunger, a lack of thirst. I'll get into that someday. But I want you to know that she was preaching on, she was preaching on the ability to forgive. And let me tell you something. That is the pri that's the primary thing that Christians need to practice is forgiveness. Because that's part of the covenant. Did you know that if God doesn't forgive you, you will never make it in? And the Bible goes on to say, he said, you know what? If you don't forgive your brethren, he won't forgive you. And then it's easy to hold that thing. It's easy to hang on to something. It's easy to make sure that, you know, I'm not going to let him go. I'm not going to let him go. I'm going to hold on to it. Let me tell you something. That's a dangerous place to be. It's a dangerous place to be. You need to learn to live in the covenant and let it go. Just go ahead and forget about it and let it go. And, and, and I'm not saying I'm not saying it'll be easy, but I'm going to tell you something. And when the time comes and you finally are able to say, you know what, it's, uh, I've let it go and it's gone, you'll find a lot less stress and a lot less anger. It's hard. I'm going to tell you, it's hard. It's not an easy thing. But the covenant requires us. Listen, the covenant requires us to love one another. The covenant requires us to forgive one another. The, the covenant requires us to have mercy on one another. Who's our example? Jesus. And he did. Now, I'm not telling you that he wasn't aggressive towards the uh, religious crowd because he was. He was aggressive against them. There's nothing wrong being aggressive against religion, but I'm telling you that for people generally, you know, we need to find that place of God in, in the covenant that, that, that we can have compassion on people. It's not an easy thing. I know right now, right now in my life, in my circumstances right now, there's things that when I start thinking about them, I get upset real quick. 
and I want to go talk to people in a very plain manner, and I want to tell them how I feel. And I'm not telling you that's wrong. You can tell people how you feel if you can do it in love. But remember, and like Sister Kay, when she stood right up here the other day and was saying that, she was speaking the truth. How? In love. She was just telling you the way it is. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. How many of you know we need to keep truth? We need to protect truth. We need to be obedient to the covenant. I want you to know that it's such a powerful thing. You know, it's such a powerful thing when you realize that you're the chosen people of God. You're, a, you're, a, you're, you're the peculiar people that Peter talked about. You are the people. You are the people. We are the people of God. Somebody says, well, did God reject his people? The Israelite? You know, Israel? Israel? No, he didn't reject them. He's still working with them. He's still going to have those people that are saved. There's going to be a remnant that are saved. There's, surely there are. And you know what the great thing is when Jesus comes back? Guess where he's coming to? He's going to put his feet right down on the Mount of Olives, right there, right here on this planet. And that mountain's going to split. He's coming back just like that. You know, I was writing some stuff on Facebook today, and I don't know if people, I don't even know if they'll understand what I'm trying to say, but I'm telling you, the day is at hand, man. The covenant's coming to a close. The age of grace is coming down to the end. Jesus is going to come soon, sooner than you think probably. And he's going to come exactly as the Bible describes it. Exactly. When he comes, he will set his feet on the Mount of Olives and that thing's going to split. And it's going to be a fantastic day for us. It's going to be a horrible day for the world. I'm telling you right up. But God keeps his, he, he always keeps his end of the covenant. It's amazing to me how the Bible is being fulfilled so fast these days. So fast. It's fantastic. I love it. You know, the prophets dreamed about living in the day we live in. They, they dreamed about seeing the things happen today that are happening. They, they, they were in awe that this stuff is going to happen. And you know what's amazing to me? It's happening just like he said every single time. You know, you, you start studying the Bible and you look at the, the way the covenant was put together and you'll find out the Bible has proven itself every single time. There's some there's particular days that God has designated to do certain things. And you know what? Man thinks he's in control, but they always happen on that day. Did you know, I told you this before, did you know it, this, this, you've heard about the Shemitah? And God keeps covenant. God keeps covenant. But I want you to know something. Did you know the Shemitah is fulfilled every seven years to the very minute? That's amazing. Somebody said, well, I didn't see nothing happen in 2015. It was the worst year for the stock market ever. And did you know it happened at the same time, the same minute that it happened in 20 or in, in 08? It was the same thing. Did you know in 08 when the stock market crashed, it was all about the sevens. It had seven written all over it. You know why? Because God says, I keep covenant and I keep my word. Now we're heading into a whole new dimension. We're moving into a whole nother seven years. And I want you to know, I was writing on Facebook, this is what I put. Did you know that these are the days, these are the days of Elijah. These are the days when God's going to do great and crazy things. Man, I'll tell you what, I get so excited about this. I'm thinking, oh, this is so fantastic what God's doing. He keeps covenant. Always keeps covenant. It's fantastic what God's fixing to do. Now, I, you know what? I don't know what the I don't know what it's going to look like in the next three years. I don't know. I didn't know what it looked like today. I thought it'd be way worse than it is. But thank God He gave us an extension. Did you know? I don't know if you believe this, and I really don't care what you believe. It's not important to me. But I believe that God Almighty gave us a reprieve when Trump got in. You say I don't like that guy. Well, fine. That's fine with me. I don't care what you like. I'm just telling you, it was ordained of God. He, he was in there. And I wasn't planning on voting for the old boy. Did you know that? I was going to vote for Ted Cruz. But I don't care. I'm not God. And God ordained it. But you know what? I'm not telling you Trump's a born-again Christian. I don't know what he is. But did you know God uses ordinary people that are not even born again 
to do what his will requires because he always keeps coming in. And I'm going to tell you right now, this year, you know, the Feast of Trumpets falls on the 21st to 22nd of September. That's the beginning of the Feast of Tabernacles from September uh, 21st, clear up through. Feast of Trumpets, Feast of or the Day of Atonement, and then the Feast of uh, Tabernacles. And I'm going to tell you right now, that day, the 23rd of September, Revelation chapter 12 begins to be happening. Did you know what the, 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 I've been doing some research on this, and I just want you to know God keeps covenant. He never changes. He never changes his mind. And, he, and God's in complete control. There's nothing that he hasn't taken control of. But I'm going to tell you something. The 23rd of September this year, did you know Revelation chapter 12 will begin to be fulfilled? Did you know that Jupiter is the king planet? Who's the king? Jesus. Did you know that there's this is this is not a singular thing? It's a multitude of people. But the Bible says that that planet is going to move into the the womb of the Virgo, the constellation Virgo. And do you know how long that king planet is going to sit there? It's never happened like this before. It's going to sit there for nine months. You know how long it takes for gestation of a human? Yeah, nine months. Did you know how long it took to build the tabernacle of Moses? Yeah, nine months. I'm telling you right now that beginning September 23rd, that is the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles is beginning to be fulfilled. God keeps covenant. And let me tell you something. When that happens from there on down, I don't know what's going to happen because things are going to change. Things are going to change. You say, oh, I can't change too bad. God ordained Trump to be in. Well, he did. But you know what? God's in control. And his, I don't care who's in this thing's going to be fulfilled to the T, to the letter. It's going to happen, just like he said. God keeps covenant. I think it's time we keep covenant. I think it's time we jump into the covenant and full-heartedly go for it. Don't you? We need to keep covenant. We need to be obedient. We need to walk in love. We need to walk in forgiveness. We need to walk in these things. We need to be givers. Man, you know what? I've been, I've been telling Kelly, we're going, to, we're going to do this and this and this. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure we give to God abundantly. We're going to give to Him. We're going to give to Him. That's what we're going to do. We're going to keep covenant, my friend. I'm not telling you we're going to be perfect in nothing, but I'm telling you we're going to do our best to keep covenant. Because when, for those who do, He will not let you down. I guarantee you, He will keep His covenant with you. He is absolutely the faithful God. Well, I don't know if that helps you or not, but it helps me. I'm thrilled about Him being faithful. Let me give you this word. Change my glasses out here. Let me give you this word. The Bible says this. The Bible says that, one more time, Deuteronomy 7, it says, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, I love the way he added that, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him. How many of you love him? He keeps covenant and, 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 and all that with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generation. That word keep, I looked that word keep up. And you know what it's a picture of? He keeps covenant. And he protects it in the same way he protected the tree of life in the garden after Adam and Eve's fail. He had big cherubims at the gate, flaming swords, and nobody got near that tree. That's how serious he is about keeping covenant. He keeps it with power. With it's as if it was surrounded by thorns. Nothing can get in to destroy it. Nothing can get in to, help, to, to take away from it. God keep a covenant for a thousand generations. He's, he, he, the Bible pictures it as he keeps his eye on it continually. He never lets it get away. He never, he never loses focus or concentration on the covenant that he cut with us. That's how serious this is. Can we do that? Can we focus in on the covenant to the point where we never lose focus? That we are completely, completely sold out to the covenant and we're going to keep covenant and we're not going to let it get away I don't know but I guarantee you when we do our lives will change your life will change I guarantee it I guarantee it let me see let me read this one more time this is in Genesis 17 and 7 he says I will establish my covenant between me that's Abraham and thee and thy seed after thee that's Isaac and the rest of us and thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant. How many of you know this is an everlasting covenant? 
to be God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. I want you to know that this is an everlasting covenant. God will always keep covenant. Always, always keep covenant. I don't know if that helps you or not, but that helps me a lot. He is faithful. He's the faithful God. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Let's stand up. Come on down here. We're going to pray together. I'll leave you alone with that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.